पार्लियामेंट में आके क्यों नहीं बोलते टीवी पे बोल सकते हैं पॉप कॉन्सर्ट पे बोल सकते हैं पार्लियामेंट के अंदर क्यों नहीं बोल सकते हैं सरकार के जल्दबाजी में लिए गए फैसले से सत्तर से ज्यादा लोग मर चुके हैं हालात बड़े खराब है पूरे देश में इमरजेंसी जैसा वातावरण है जो लोग मर चुके हैं सरकार से हमारी मांगे उनको उचित मुआवजा मिले प्रधानमंत्री को बुलाया हम ये चाहते हैं प्राइम मिनिस्टर यहाँ रहे हमारी बात सुने और एडजमेंट मोशन जो हम मूव किए उसको आप एडमिट कीजिए प्राइम मिनिस्टर को बुलाइए हम एडजमेंट मोशन चाहते हैं इसलिए कि सारे देश में गरीब लोग मर रहे हैं किसान बन रहा है शादियां टूट रही है भारत सरकार चर्चा करने के लिए तैयार है हर पहलू पर हम चर्चा करने के लिए तैयार है क्योंकि मैं नहीं समझता हमारे विपक्ष के लोग काले धन के पक्ष में हैं, हमारे विपक्ष के लोग आतंकवाद के पक्ष में हैं, जाली नोट के पक्ष में हैं। मोस्ट ऑफ द कस्टमर्स हु बाई टू व्हीलर do so with cash down payment uh, there's a large amount of finance that happens i think the nbfcs in particular have been very badly impacted i understand from motorcycle financiers in the nbfc space that their collections have been very weak and they expect their arrears to increase i think that will put another damper uh, on on sales uh, going into the season so i do expect that a decline of around 25% is foreseeable for this month from what i can understand really uh, pricing is determined by supply and demand and uh, except for pockets which have very high involvement of cash there are certain pockets for example in north india where there is a very high involvement of cash which is not the case in mumbai or bangalore uh, so there where there are very there is a very large component of cash there may be an impact but other than that i think overall if you see the fact that most people now expect interest rates to be down by about 150 basis points over the next 12 to 18 months you if you would have that kind of stimulus uh, you expect demand to remain fairly good or even strengthen see 80% of a business is dependent on cash the exemptions which are being provided are really a joke we we've been we've been surprised that how can they be so blinded towards our industry when they know that we are highly cash dependent and that's total is only uh, a part of the cash expenditure which we incur you will see some reallocation from physical assets to financial assets that was already happening because of low yield to be honest even without demonetization people had begun to realize that the yield from gold and the yield from real estate was no longer perhaps as high or attractive as they had thought so some was happening this will accelerate that we would expect to see 15 to 20% eventually start to look for higher yield and to start start to look for capital market like products as opposed to keeping it in uh, savings or current accounts a lot of this money will actually find its way into mutual funds some of it into liquid funds some of it into equity funds and definitely a lot more sips let's assume that you know ultimately say 10 lakh crores comes back into the system out of the 14 or 15 lakh crores of currency notes that were there and out of the 10 lakhs i am expecting that over a period of time at least 10% will come into the mutual fund system in one way or other
Welcome back to our special coverage of the government's demonetization drive and its impact. Joining us today, Prabhat Patnai, Professor at JNU, R. Kavita Rao, Professor at NIPFP, Ajay Jhakar of the Bharat Krishak Samaj, Ratna Vishwanathan, CEO of Microfinance Institutions Network, and Shamika Ravi, Senior Fellow at Brookings India. Uh, you know, I want to pick up on the point that was made just before we took the break by Ishwar Prasad there of Cornell University. And Mr. Prasad pointing out that the government should not take any fiscal or monetary policy action at this point till the dust really settles. Shamika Ravi, let me start by asking you because the buzz in Delhi is that, you know, we will see this fiscal stimulus being provided by the government, uh, you know, added public investment on infrastructure and so on and so forth. There is talk of a radical rate cut as well. Uh, your, your 90 seconds on the need for fiscal or monetary policy action or should we wait till the dust settles? Well, uh, again, you know, I think the lending rates are going to fall, uh, largely because, you know, we have seen a leftward shift, we have seen money supply fall, uh, and there is reason to believe that if we are able to make this transformation, which is eventually what this is meant to be, towards more plastic and mobile and, and you know, NCPI and the, you know, the rupees of the world are able to get their act together, and we actually do, uh, you know, formalize a lot of such transactions, then the demand for cash should also fall. And my sense is the demand mm. for cash is going to fall uh, uh, much more than the amount of cash that has been destroyed in this process. If that happens, the real interest okay. rate should fall. And, and, you know, there's reason to believe then that that actually is a future stimulus to growth uh, in India. Mr. Patnai? You know, I, I, I don't agree with this, you know, because the interest rate cannot be expected to fall as long as money supply has fallen. Because unless it is the case that the economy continues to be in such a serious recession, that notwithstanding the fall in money supply, you still have, as it were, a plethora of money to manage transactions, I don't see why interest rate should fall. But I just want to also make an extra point about this, this other thing of mm -hmm. banks being flush with funds. You see, nobody has ever said that in India banks were cash strapped because banks have other means of accessing cash, including from the Reserve Bank through the repo route. So the fact that suddenly mm. a lot of cash comes into their, 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 their tillers does not mean that they are going to simply give larger loans. It may well mean that they would simply mm. substitute more expensive sources of obtaining cash for cheaper sources sure. of obtaining cash because, you know, they would give out credit only to only to the people they think are credit worthy only depending on the demand for credit so they're not going to lower interest mm. rates they would rather boost their profitability by substituting cheap cash for more expensive cash and and, and so i don't see if denom if demonetization boosts banks profitability why that is something which is uh, such a kind of you know, noble thing to have that actually people should be inconvenienced mm. for it Okay, uh, let me bring in uh, Ratna. And Ratna, you know, uh, I, I want to get you to comment on the uh, on this business of the myths that have been created by the Reserve Bank circular that was put out. And we've been speaking with a bunch of uh, uh, NBFCs and microfinance institutions, and the fear is that perhaps that circular has been misinterpreted. Uh, take us through what you believe are the key myths around the RBI circular that was issued yesterday, granting you that 60-day additional period. Uh, thanks. Uh, actually, it's really important that this be underlined here. You see, what it has actually done, the circular that came out yesterday actually stated is that today a non-performing as any asset that does not perform for 90 days becomes a non-performing asset. All it has done is extended this period by about another 60 days. So today, for up to 31st December, a non-performing asset is being given 150 days as opposed to the original 90 days within which it would have become a mm. substandard asset. Uh, unfortunately, uh, there has been a misinterpretation by the general public, by the press, with everybody saying that loans have been deferred for 60 days. The loans have not been deferred. Mm. It's an, you know, it's upstream, but the downstream part of it has not really been in any way affected because even if I get 60 days extra to repay my loan, the interest that I will be paying during that period will still remain. So it's not that if I pay my, mm. my interest is not going to get waived for that 60 day period. So it's not really a deferment mm. of any sort at all. It's more, you know, dealing with the NPA part 
of the uh, loans etc that the uh, entities have taken so somewhere i think we need to recognize mm. this unfortunately what has happened is because it has gone uh, uh, you know the interpretation has been accepted by as such everywhere we have a lot and since most of our customers are unlettered to a large extent they are being exploited at se several uh -huh. levels by being told that you really don't need to pay back you can pay back after 60 days which is misinformation because they will end up bearing the burden of interest so which is why we are actually going out trying to inform people that this is not the right interpretation of the circular that came out okay. yesterday and and hopefully hopefully by putting that message out on this show uh, we are going to try and clear the air so to yes. speak but let me go back to ajay uh, ajay this is a news flash that's just come in the reserve bank has issued an advisory to banks on making cash available for cash making cash available for the rabi crop season i'm reading this out because it's just hit my uh, mailbox it's imperative that farmers are adequately supported financially it is estimated that about 35000 crores would be required that's the number by the way that i had said was uh, was doing the rounds here in the corridors of power it is estimated that about 35000 crores would be required by the dccbs for sanction and disbursement of crop loans to farmers at the rate of 10000 crores per week nabard would be utilizing its own crash credit limits up to about 23000 crores to enable the dccbs to disperse the required crop loans to pacs and farmers uh, this is the sum and substance of the advisory that's just literally uh, a minute ago been issued by the reserve bank of india ajay your first comments see i i <clears throat> i i keep coming back to the point that rbi is to blame i think so as farmers we are really missing raghuram rajan here i i really think that these misleading circulars or, or, or circulars written by some it, 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 i can't even believe that these people are running the reserve bank of india today because you look at it first they came out with a circular where where it there was no clarity if cooperative banks could accept deposits after two days they came out with a sort of clarification circular saying that cooperative ca banks can't accept deposits then they came up with a circular mm. saying that nb about nbfcs which there's no clarity then they came up with a circular about how marriages how money would be released to marriages it it it, it is like it's ridiculous absolutely then they came out with a circular saying no, that farmers can buy seeds no, no, but I, they can I, I only get, buy by 500 rupees i get the point that you i, I get second, the point that you're making ajay i get the yeah so now now we we come to the point that the government has said that you can buy seeds with 500 rupee notes but you cannot buy them with 1000 rupee notes i mean why are farmers being discriminated i really think that the point needs mm. to be put across and now the question comes is that the money supply is going to be made available to cooperative banks but again there is there is no clarity in the circular if farmers can deposit money in their accounts now there are two different things one is that loans will be given to farmers but what about farmers who want to repay the loans of farmers who have 500 and 1000 rupee notes can they go and deposit it in cooperative banks there is no clarity on that i think so nabard needs to come out with clear very clear simple guidelines that can be understand understood hmm. by the layman i really think that the real situation that the rbi has failed and i think so nabard hmm. is helpless in the thing because it does not control anything it's been given orders by the rbi and what to do and what not to do and what to expect but i i really think that uh, some heads at rbi must roll for for the mess that they have got this nation in well that's a very big uh, statement that you're making there that heads at rbi must roll for uh, the manner in which these decisions have been taken or the lack of them but ajay specifically on the advisory that's been issued today for the benefit of our viewers who are watching this program does it mean anything will it be meaningful will it really provide relief to farmers so i i i think uh, what the government has done is very good what they have done now is releasing funds for farmers i think it's a consequence of the of the pre budget consultations that happened on saturday which i also attended and this was a point that we had put that cooperative that money must flow into the cooperative uh, network for so for for that it would be available be made available to farmers but i'm coming back to the question that i don't have clarity of farmers so the the clear is that money will be made available for farmers to buy seeds and fertilizers or whatever but yeah. there is no clarity of farmers yeah. can deposit money in the accounts where is the clarity on that part yeah that and that i don't well, see that i think the circulars that are coming out are not clear enough yeah. in the language hmm yeah, yeah, that, you know you make question. a fair point I, there I really and think i think the government I, has it's it's the government has responded to farmers demand of along for infusion of uh, uh, money into the cooperative network but 
you know, it needs to, let's see what the government does tomorrow, which cooperative banks are allowed to accept or not accept deposits. There are two types of cooperative banks, one which are connected yes. to the RBI through an internet system and one which are not. So we still have to wait and see what actually rolls out tomorrow or day after. It's too early to uh, decide on base of circulars because the government is changing circulars every day now. I think so. Uh, well, that is right. Uh, we are seeing it. circulars and statements and changes being announced practically every day. You're, you're making a very valid point there. But Shamita Ravi, uh, you know, you, you, you made a comment there that we're dealing with a, uh, with a vacuum as far as information is concerned. Ajay Jhakar making the point there that perhaps a lot of these measures or circulars or statements or, uh, you know, steps that the government is taking are, have not been thought through. The government's argument is that, look, we're responsive, we're sensitive, we're agile, we're reacting to the situation as it unfolds. Your quick comment on, on you know, which side should we believe? Well, look, there, there was a definitiveness about, you know, Modi's announcements when the demonetization announcement happened on the 8th. And I think that's part of the reason why you will see, you know, widespread, uh, you know, still have, you know, faith that people have been generally quite cooperative uh, in this entire process. But two weeks is a long enough time. And the definitiveness or the decisiveness of the announcement uh, has to be followed up by decisiveness of... Uh, you know, announcements and if there are exemptions or rules from every ministry, cash has affected, you know, all walks of life. It's not just agriculture. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm glad you have somebody from agriculture yeah. on the panel. But MSMEs, I mean, you have, uh, you know, all informal sector. There is a very large, yes. I mean, we are essentially cash dependent. But the issue is in two weeks, mm -hmm. It would be nice to see more decisiveness in terms of moving forward. Mm. What are the specific policies that we are going to see for this entire mm. transformation to happen? And I think, you know, we should have yeah. seen po polio-like camps, you know, the vaccine camps, by, by N NC mm. NPCI, by, you know, Rupee, mm. I mean, just in a... Yeah. Or even the new ATMs. I mean, we should know how much currency has sure. been pumped back in. And, and that sort of renews people's faith. But eventually, Shireen, I mean, going back to uh, the, the JNK discussion, all theoretical, you know, we know that wherever there are illegal activities, which are essentially carried out by cash, and whether it is insurgency, it's ter terrorism, kidnapping, mm. or any other form of illegal activities, which are all cash dependent, you will see a decline. So it's not just JNK. My, my guess would yeah. be even parts of Northeast. You should see, you know, a yeah. lot of deposits coming in because these are economies which are flush with cash. Okay. Uh, uh, let me now get in comments from uh, from Professor Patnaik. Uh, Professor Patnaik, uh, address the point that Shamita just made. Uh, you know, what happens now to labor-oriented industries? For instance, one of our colleagues uh, at, at the Marble Hub in Udaipur, and, and again, you know, while people support the move in the long term, in the short term, they say, Aaj ki tariq mein industry ruk gai hai. And this is the refrain that we're getting from a lot of the MSMEs, etc., as well. Near-term solutions, demonetization is not going anywhere. There is no rollback. The government has made that absolutely clear. So if I were to ask you about near-term solutions, what could those be? Firstly, let me just make one point about this counterfeit money. You know, if the idea is to attack counterfeit currency, then there is absolutely no reason why 500 or 1,000 rupee notes should have been declared non-legal tender. Because after all, old notes are always getting exchanged uh, for new ones. And, and, and that's a process of time. Now, during which the old notes do not cease to be legal tender. I think the biggest mistake mm. the government was, even assuming that it, it you know, e e even if one is sympathetic to the government's objective, was to actually say that from the eighth night onwards, 500 and 1,000 rupee notes should not be legal tender. They should have continued to be mm. legal tender until some terminal date. And that's not what they did. Now, I think that one way or the other you know we are now in a situation where even little amelioration of the distress we are actually cheering we're very happy about but the distress mm. itself is after all something that continues and in fact now resumption mm. of normalcy appears such a complex and 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 a distant goal and meanwhile mm. the tragedy that has been inflicted you know this distinction between short and long term itself begins to break down because mm. there is there are ir mm. irreversibilities for instance 
instance, if you have the informal sector getting a jolt, then it's quite likely that the informal sector may not even recover fully when the economy mm. is back again with ad adequate money supply. Uh, you know, so so mm. this distinction between short and long term is something which I'm not very persuaded by. Okay. You're not very persuaded by uh, Savita Rao. Let me give you the final word then. Uh, you know, Professor Patnaik, they're talking about a questioning the resumption of normalcy. Uh, whether it's by way of taxes, it's the contraction that we're likely to see in consumption, the slowdown which the government today itself, the finance minister admitting that we will see a slowdown. He hopes at least over the next quarter or two quarters perhaps, and then he believes things will be get back to normal. Resumption of normalcy, what's the visibility from where you sit today? Um, it is all dependent on how much we expect people to go digital. If we uh, replenish the cash that people have returned to the banks today, I would expect normalcy to come in much faster. If we expect, as uh, the, the panelists from Brookings were saying, that a large part of the transactions need to go digital, we are asking a large part of the economy to be forced into the transition where there's no electricity, where there's no uh, connectivity, we are asking for a big change. And that change is going to mean that this process of pain is going to last for much longer. So if you want the economy to turn around, you need to repopulate uh, money supply. You need to replenish what you've taken out of the economy. Mm. If you want to go digital, then the pain continues for much longer. And then uh, it I don't so see much it happening very yes. easily because there are large pockets of the, wo of the economy yeah, yeah, there are large parts of the economy where you don't have electricity continuously available. Net mobile connectivity sure. is not there. Uh, the infrastructure to support okay. the so-called digital economy is not there. So I wouldn't mm. expect uh, such major changes to happen overnight. And it's not fair to all the people, largely to the people who are unlettered, as was just mentioned. Yes. Then you expect them to go from a tangible money, money that you can feel and see and understand, to something intangible right. like mobile money. And you expect that Okay, let me give happen? Ajay the final... I don't believe it's yeah. that scene. Out that of time, easy. out of time, uh, Kavita. Let me give Ajay the final say. Ajay, we're completely out of time. I'd appreciate it if you could wrap this up very quickly. Yeah, I, I want to say that today the Prime Minister has the support of the people. Do not be fooled by lines at ATM. I don't know how much of the percentage of the people of the country have debit cards or credit cards to go and withdraw cash. Don't look at urban centers. I think so. The support of the people is with the Prime Minister today, but they support the Prime Minister in the belief that what he has done will not only end black money, it will also end corruption mm. and it will hurt viewers of TV channels like CNBC, TV18 because the poor people think that the rich people are to blame for the miseries and that's the factual truth. But we're not a rich man's channel, sir. Let me, let me just finish. How long that perception will last? Only time will tell. But that is the perception today because what people feel today is because of what they think will be the result of this activity. Now, only time will tell if this feeling will last longer than a month or not. That's, that's what I have to say. Well, only, only time will tell. The jury is out. Uh, Ajay Jhakar, Professor Patnaik, uh, Shamita, Kavita and Ratna, appreciate you joining us here. As I pointed out, we're trying to keep this as informative and as engaging as possible. Uh, let the viewers decide on which side they want to be of this debate. But many thanks for watching. Thanks very much indeed.